So having opened its doors in 1996, Angel Gallery has become the cornerstone of what is now West Queen West uh, Art and Design District. So I'm here with the proprietor, Jamie Angel, a passionate advocate of Toronto's art scene and visionary of its future. So Jamie, what inspired you to open Angel Gallery and locate it in this area 15 years ago? Well, that's a very good question. I haven't been asked that for a while. I, uh, I, I always wanted to open a gallery. I, when I was 26, uh, oh, actually in my early 20s, I was in, in, introduced to the gallery scene in Yorkville, which was uh, the center of uh, art uh, gallery going back in the 80s. And so I was uh, a convert soon after going to my first couple openings. And I started meeting artists and I thought, wow, you know, I'm so taken from their creativity and their different take on, on the world. So I thought, you know, in my own naive way that I could somehow manage that creativity. And then I worked for a gallery for a short period of time and got an idea of what an art dealer does. But I decided in the meantime to move to Paris and, and for a few years and that was kind of my, uh, more, uh, my education more in the masters uh, from Renaissance up to the 20th century, 21st, no, 20th. And after that I had a, a stint for a year in New York so it really helped me polish uh, my views on the contemporary art. And I came back to Toronto to, and there was a co-op that opened up through Artscape where artists uh, live, there was this work live spaces uh, and that opened in 95 and I came down to the neighborhood and I was so taken by this, this rawness, this, this, I felt like there was a sense of a renaissance in making because this, this Artscape artist building had such a great vibe and energy to it and I was addicted to to that and the neighborhood. So I decided to open a gallery uh, just based on the fact that there was a sense of a renaissance in the making and I wanted to be a part of it. So your commitment and support of Canadian artists is you know, really impressive. Uh, do the artists you represent in your, gal in your gallery um, all express uh, similar or, or reflect similar qualities? Yet another good question. Thank you for asking that. And, and it's, um, you know, it does, there is a common thread because I think part of the personality of the gallery and, and the personality of the artists and, and the exhibitions and the way they're curated have a certain link. And I find that there is there's this balance of, of dark and light, it's a good and evil and yin and yang, but also this utopian dystopian. So, and that's this fracture that's, that's taken place in society in, in many ways and trying to make sense of it. And with this new show by Kim Dorland, which is uh, titled Nocturne, which you could see that most of them are, are painted uh, in reflections of nature scenes yeah. uh, at night. We were just discussing uh, Kim Dorland and uh, I know that the other artist is Bonnie Baxter. So Bonnie is living in Montreal, teaches there, and she went on a journey and revisited a number of places that she had been to many years previous. And the motif and the alter ego is this woman that you see from behind with the blonde wig. And again, it's called Jane's Journey, Jane's Mansfield, but it's more on the play on Dick and Jane. Again, the yin and the yang. Yeah. So those are photographs, Kim's are paintings, and some, uh, some sculpture works as well. So how has art in its many forms evolved since you opened? Well, that's another good question, because in anything in life, it's something that is unknown as art and not tangible and not a necessity and so on. People don't necessarily understand what they're looking at, mm -hmm. what's the value in it. And at yeah. the end of the day, you want to be able to educate people. Something as unknown as art you want to be able to share it in an intimate way and maybe meet the artist and get a story yeah. behind it. But really how I've seen things change within the gallery world in the last 15 years since I opened is that people are more willing to uh, acquire art, support Canadian talent. They no longer need the validation of going outside the country. Can you perhaps share your vision of the art world and maybe the decade to come? Sort of where do you see it? Yet another so good question. Forms, I well, I, I could speak from the next decade to come for the gallery that it's very important that we collaborate with other galleries in Canada and the world because 
Collaboration is always the way to go. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Toronto is no longer just Toronto. Yeah. We're, we, we've grown up and, 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 and there's an audience for seeing work that's, that's uh, been shown in Berlin and London and New York. And Kim is one of those artists that shows in different countries as well. So it's, it's to be able to show local as well as bring in artists from around the world. That's I think great. Toronto's that's ready for that. I think so too. Thanks so much, Jamie. It was a pleasure chatting with you, and I'm really looking forward to you know exploring the rest of the exhibition tonight. Well, I really appreciate yeah. your support in coming tonight. This has been Chelsea Conway bringing you inspirational urbanites and lively cultainment.